Hey folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk. Want to share with you uh, an abstract from an article published near the end of September of 2022. And it ties into uh, some things that I have been uh, discussing in the past. So an article appeared in uh, JGR Oceans, Journal of Geophysical Research. And uh, the lead author is Chen Ming Dong and, uh, et al. And it's a regime shift in annual nitrate concentration in the upper southern Chukchi borderland responded to the westward shift of the Beaufort Gyra. Okay, look at the abstract. Recent strengthening and west, westward movement of the Beaufort Gyra. In other words, and you, you recall the Beaufort Gyra pretty much sits in the Beaufort Sea. It's moving a little more westward, in other words, towards the uh, East Siberian Sea uh, end of things along with the rapid retreat of Arctic sea ice, we know about that, creates a new hotspot for investigating ecosystem responses to environmental changes over the Chukchi borderland. As an important basis for primary production, nutrient variation and its controls in, the hot, in this hotspot region require to be preliminarily clarified. Using a hindsight simulation of a coupled ocean a sea ice biogeochemical model, NAPABGC, covering 98 to 2015. This study suggests a regime shift in annual nitrate concentration in the upper southern Chukchi borderland with the lower concentrations since 2009. The relative contributions of biological and physical Processes to annual nitrate variation are quantified via budget estimates. The results show a less tempor temporarily variable contribution of biological processes to nitrate variation, while the role of advection, shifting from a nitrate source to a nitrate sink since 2009, that's important right there. Nitrate source to a nitrate sink, implying the nitrates are not going to be readily available. This suggests physical processes mainly, mainly determine the nitrate transition in the upper southern Chukchi borderland. Driven by the westward shift of the Beaufort Gyra, the westward and southward expansion of the upper oligotrophic Canada Basin water narrows the pathway of nitrate-rich shelf water flowing over the Chukchi borderland. Meanwhile, the enhanced anticyclonic clockwise velocity at the marginal Beaufort Gyra leads to an increased westward nitrate flux across the Chukchi borderland and decrease nitrate supply to the north. Consequently, higher nitrate concentration exists in a narrow region to the south of 75 degrees north, whereas the remaining areas have lower nitrate concentration, contributing to the overall reduction in annual average nitrate concentration since 2009 in the southern Chukchi borderland. Okay. You have the uh, you have the Beaufort Seas and the Chukchi Sea and the Beaufort Gyra is basically in that vicinity. The Chukchi Sea is pretty much what we see off the northwestern when you go through the Bering Strait, you know, into the Arctic Ocean, you're in, and you and you're staying towards the Alaska end of things. You're getting into the Chukchi Sea, so it's like the Northwest, uh, 
you know, uh, areas of, of Alaska. The Beaufort Sea kind of generally, you know, said to start around the eastern portions of Alaska, but more the, like, the Mackenzie River uh, Delta uh, uh, section of uh, Arctic Canada, you know, like the, the Yukon Territories, Northwest Territories, uh, that vicinity there. Now, when they talk about 75, you know, south of 75 degrees right here, yep. Uh, okay, uh, Point Barrow, the town of Barrow is now called Ukiapik, but uh, Point Barrow is sitting at about 70 degrees north latitude. So we're talking pretty close to the Alaskan shore, is what, what they're saying here. So that's, we see the high nitrate concentration in the narrow region to the south, which kind of makes sense as you have a, a shallow shelf there. So uh, if you have any Ekman uh, uh, pumping uh, up, uh, and up pumping, uh, you can, I can see, you know, materials being concentrated there. Okay. So let's, before we get into the key points here, let's talk about some of, uh, you know, parse out some of the things going on here. So the first thing to note is that, you know, they're basically saying biological processes in influencing nitrate variation is really not a big contributor. But what they see is that, you know, physical processes mainly determine the nitrate transition and therefore the concentrations that are found. There is a saying in oceanography. The physics drives the biology. And that's what they're finding here. Yeah. Advection, upwelling, downwelling, convergence, divergence, you have it. The physics drives the biology. Oligotrophic, that word here, oligotrophic. Okay. That basically means nutrient poor. Eutrophic is nutrient rich. So when they're talking about the Canada Basin, the upper Canada Basin being nutrient poor, but that means it's nutrient poor. So therefore, the southward expansion of that, get that out of there, the, the southward expansion of the upper oligotrophic Canada Basin water narrows the pathway by, of nitrate rich shelf water flowing over. So in other words, this poor nutrient water, it hinders how nitrate-rich waters can move about and be available. The movement of the gyra, both of gyra, leads to increased westward nitrate. So basically, you know, it's a clockwise flow, so it's taken and pushing the concentrate. The gyre itself is moving wet and it's pushing the nitrate. It's increasing its flux to the west and at the same time decreases its supply to the north, i.e. towards the, getting closer to the pole. Hence why we, they found this narrow region of the higher nitrate concentrations. Nitrate is an important nutrient for phytoplankton. So if we're having less nitrate available overall, which is what they're finding here, that's not good for productivity. It may be good in the region where it's concentrated, but you may have, you may have decent productivity there. But if you look at the overall region, it's probably a decrease in productivity. They also talk about the rapid retreat of, uh, retreat of Arctic sea ice. Recall when I did my uh, ice algae um, video that I discussed the three major ways of productivity that could take place. One, you have ice edge productivity. As the ice melts, that freshwater layer creates a little state, just a very localized, uh, stable stratification. 
with the locked in nutrient and you get what's called ice edge productivity. If there's no snow covering the ice so that light can penetrate through the ice, you have algae on the underside of the ice. Well, the light stimulates you know, the electron transport system within the chloroplast and it helps stimulate primary productivity. Then as the ice melts, the actual open water phytoplankton don't really get to do their thing until the sun is at a high enough angle to activate the electron transport chain system in the phytoplankton. If you lose the sea ice, you're going to lose the ice edge productivity. You're going to lose the productivity from the algae on the underside of the ice. You're losing two major sources. So now the question is, are there other means to which these two major uh, sources of primary productivity that are lost and being lost, are there other ways to make up for that? And I see a number of conflicting reports saying yes, saying no. If we were to look at what they're finding here with lower nitrate concentration, that will negatively impact primary productivity. So now let's look at the key points. The westward movement of the Beaufort Gyre drives the enhanced westward component of ocean currents in the southern Chukchi borderland with the change current westward nitrate flux in the southern Chukchi borderland increases northward flux decreases nitrate concentration in the upper southern Chukchi borderland has been shifting from a high level to a low level for over the last basically 13 years lower nitrate concentration Decreased productivity, decreased net NPP, net primary productivity, leads to problems with the ecosystem overall. Okay, let's look at the plain language summary. With the intensified westward movement of Beaufort Gyra, along with the rapid retreat of sea ice in Western uh, Arctic Ocean, the Chukchi borderland has become a frontier of research on the physical oceanography, biogeochemical cycles, <clears throat> and marine ecosystems. The westward shift of the Beaufort Gyra has induced a regime shift in the nitrate concentration state from high to low in the upper southern Chukchi borderland since 2009. Nitrate budget results show that biological processes contributed to nitrate variation with narrow temporal variability. Advection has shifted from a nitrate source to a nitrate sink. That's another thing I wanted to address. Since 09, thus determining the nitrate transition, the upper southern Chukchi borderland, under the variation of the Beaufort Gyra upper layer oligotrophic, oligotrophic water in the Canada Basin narrows the pathway range of nitrate rich shelf water flowing to the Chukchi borderland. Changes in the anticyclonic circulation velocity structure around 2009 led to an increased westward nitrate flux and decrease supply, nitrate supply to the north, resulting in an overall decrease in annual average nitrate concentration. As the material basis for phytoplankton growth, the distribution pattern of nitrate will further affect the primary production in biological carbon pump. Now, when they talked about from a nitrate source, to a nitrate sink. That's just another way of saying that instead of nitrate being available, nitrate is becoming unavailable. Because once it sinks out of the photic zone, doesn't matter. It has to be within the photic zone. And if it's sinking, if it's moving vertically down, which is the implication here, or just simply even being removed from the surface water to elsewhere. It's not going to be available for the phytoplankton and for the phytoplankton to grow and increase their biomass, which then the zooplankton grades upon, so on and so on. 
So in other words, when they say the distribution pattern of nitrate will further affect the primary production and biological carbon pump, well, what the base is getting at is that overall, again, over some areas were seeing a concentration in higher rate of nitrate, but other areas were seeing lower, and the overall is lower, which means being lost somewhere. So little area will do well at the and the rest will not. But overall, this loss of nitrate will affect primary production. In other words, primary production will decrease. And if you don't have primary productivity going on, well, you're not going to be able to sequester the carbon down to depth. Because if you don't have primary production, they're not going to use up the CO2. The CO2 levels will stay high, will not be drawn down by the phytoplankton. And when the phyto, so you normally when the phytoplankton, you know, create tissue, you know, increase their growth and so on, and then zooplankton graze and they get grazed upon and so on, eventually those organisms die and they sink. And they take the carbon with them, right? When we have carbon in our bodies. That's the biological carbon pump they're referring to here. You know, organism, dead organism sinking and sequestering the carbon out. Well, if you don't have nitrate, you can't have the phytos doing their thing. Net pr primary production decreases and you ain't going to have the carbon pump sequestering the carbon. So what that happens then? That carbon that does not get removed from the upper surface layer, very likely that it will find its way back into the atmosphere. Not necessarily all of it, but, you know, some of it will. And, 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 of course, adds to the CO2 levels. So, overall, this is really not good news. Nitrates being lost, overall. That means primary production will decrease carbon pump. It's, it's sequestering carbon will decrease Yet another aspect of changes humans are doing. If you like what I what I do here with my videos, whether it's my shorter videos, my deep dive videos, uh, please subscribe if you have not already subscribed. Please share. Please. Uh, Hit the like button. This helps improve the algorithms for uh, my channel and hopefully give my channel more exposure. I'm, I'm trying to increase my uh, the number of subscribers that I have because I consider what I do here important information that really needs to be disseminated to a much larger uh, audience. And um, I need your help uh, to do so. Also, uh, if you are able to, and uh, you know, please support the work I do by becoming uh, a patron at patreon.com. If you're already a, a patron of mine, thank you very much. But um, you can find the information in the description box uh, below my videos for how to become uh, my patron at uh, Patreon. But um, I, I feel that we are all in this together, and you know, together is how we can, you know, get this much uh, needed information uh, to more and more people. So, thank you for your continued support, and until next time.